Just like our own ancestors, Dragonlance has a complex and culturally significant creation story. But interestingly, not every race was intentional. Some exist simply because of chaos itself. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about the different races that make up the inhabitants of Kryn. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel, ring the bell, and you can further help this channel and pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link in the description below. I'm going to repeat a little of the ages of Kryn at the beginning of this tale, but it's for good reason, as the races of Kryn are at the total mercy of its gods. In the Age of Starbirth, the forging god Reorx struck his hammer amidst chaos to form Kryn. The sparks from his hammer became the stars. Dragons were made from the elements and encased in metal frames. The Dark Queen corrupted them, tarnishing their metals. In response, Reorx forges five monuments to the lost dragons from precious metals for Paladine, who breathes life into them. Thus began the All-Dragons War. The High God returned from the beyond and ended the war, sending the gods to their astral planes, demanding that they leave the universe created alone. The stars from Reorx were discovered to be alive with spirit and became known as the children of the gods. The gods began vying for control over these spirits. The gods of the Pillar of Evil wanted to enslave these spirits. The gods of the Pillar of Good wanted to nurture them to righteousness and the gods of the Pillar of Neutrality wanted the spirits to have the freedom to determine their own fate. Thus was the beginning of the All Saints' War. The High God returned from the beyond once again and demanded an end to the war. He allowed the gods to bestow one gift upon these spirits from each pillar. The gods of the Pillar of Good gave the spirits life and physical form. The gods of the Pillar of Evil gave the spirits hunger and thirst and the gods of the Pillar of Neutrality gave the spirits free will to preserve the balance. The different races were created from these spirits and were placed on the planet of Kryn. The gods of the Pillar of Good created elves as the shapers of the world. The gods of the Pillar of Neutrality created humans. They were coveted by the gods of good and evil, but had free will to make their own decisions. The gods of the Pillar of Evil created the race of ogres. They were the most beautiful of all the races, but were consumed by their hunger. The High God created the animals, born of the world itself which spans the balance of good, neutrality, and evil. Dragons are deemed the lords of the animal kingdom. In the Age of Dreams, the ogres claimed the mountains, the elves chose the forests, and humans claimed the plains. The ogres enslaved humans to form the mighty nation of cold stone while the elves watched. Reorx calls out to humans to join him in the northern lands for assistance in his labors, and humans rebel against their slavers, and barbarism reigns as the ogres are corrupted. The elves found the nation of Sylvanos, but her forests have already been claimed by dragons. The elves convene the first Synthel Elish, Elven High Council, and prepare for war. Reorx grows distressed by the humans' haughtiness and creates gnomes, natural tinkers, from them. The first dragon war ends after the gods of magic assist the elves by crafting five magical stones. The elves hide them in the Kalkist Mountains after a fiercely won victory. The trickster god Hidekel convinces Reorx to forge the Greystone, who accidentally traps chaos within and places it on the moon of Lunatary. The elves create their civilization after the now ancient and fallen Ogre Nation. Hidical tricks the gnome to travel to Lunatary to claim the Greystone, who loses it and unleashes its chaos on Kryn. Reorx demands that gnomes recapture the Greystone, and wild magic falls into the hands of some humans who become scions. Gargath, a human barbarian prince, captures the Greystone, binding it between two god gems. The gnomes, joined by the elves, demand its return. Well, Gergath recruits ogres to help defend his prize. When the stone is freed, it corrupts all present, changing their forms to reflect their nature. Hence, 
Goblins, minotaurs, kender, sea elves, and dwarves, amongst others, are born. In the chaos, the Greystone is lost, with the evolution of the races on Kryn complete, Though there would be future temperament changes to different species, we can now focus on the races themselves. Humans, being one of the three original races, are favored by the neutral gods. You can imagine the pure diversity represented by them in size, demeanor, pursuits, and motivations. Since they have shorter lifespans, they tend to be more ambitious and impatient, restless and dissatisfied. That being said, we can categorize the human race into two subsections, civilized and nomads. Civilized humans are the largest population on Ancelon. They live in denser, urban, and suburban locations, generally focusing on their professions. Nomads, also known as primitives, barbarians, and savages, seek harmony in nature and their pursuits. They tend to live as humans have for thousands of years in more tribal groups. Humans tend to stand between 5.5 and 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 6.5 feet, weighing an average of 170 pounds. Elves are beloved by the gods of good, being one of the first races, and live in harmony with their natural surroundings, if not with the other races on the planet. Their long lives make them more passive in appearance, uninvolved and ethereal. They have split into four major categories— Kaganesti, or wild elves, are more on the primitive side, while the Sylvanesti elves are nationalistic, beautiful, but cold to outsiders. The Qualinesti have the most interaction with other races, though they can be distrustful of others' motivations. And the sea elves are proud and passionate in everything they do, finding harmony in their existence. Elves can range in height from 5 to over 6 feet, and average around 100 pounds. Ogres were also one of the first races, favored by the gods of evil. They are a much more complex race than one might think at first glance. They were created with physical grace, beauty, and magic use, but over time, some degenerated into the more commonly known ugly brutes. These first ogres were the Irida, or High Ones. They lived secluded from the rest of the planet, They are deeply introspective and seem aloof to other races. They average six feet in height. Their crueler cousins, or fallen ogres, have existed since the Age of Dreams. They're creatures of appetite and greed, always ready for a good fight. They're extremely aggressive, but highly social, preferring to live tribally in an effort to recreate their great ancestor's nation. They stand an average of eight to nine feet tall and are extremely dense. Gnomes were the result of a curse Reorks placed on his human assistants who swayed from neutrality and were consumed by their petty crafts. Hence, gnomes are consumed by their craftsmanship, never able to achieve the greatness other races would know. Throughout history, gnomes concentrated on both scientific and theological development. The largest settlement of gnomes is beneath Mount Nevermind, an extinct volcano on Sancrist Isle. The first gnomes stopped here on their chase after the Greystone and never left. They are serious, unused to social pleasantries, and uncomfortable with emotional displays. They're happiest when engaged in their work. Gnomes are assigned life quests at birth by the guild subcommittee their family belongs to. They average three feet in height and weigh 45 to 50 pounds. Dwarves are known throughout Kryn as skilled builders and master artisans. They're separated into mountain and hill dwarves, delineated by region and engagement with other races. To outsiders, dwarves can seem dour, but that is simply their public persona. Personally, they can be as outgoing and gregarious as any race. They take pride in their beards and share a love of precious metals and gems. They stand between four to four and a half feet and are so dense in bone and muscle that they are much heavier than one may guess. Dwarves are a judgmental race, being quick to note at least one dissatisfaction with any other given race, but they can share their appreciation for them just as fairly. Gully dwarves are the result of interbreeding between dwarves and gnomes, then further interbreeding with their own species. They are known as the agar, or anguished. Humans christened them gully dwarves. They were banned in both gnome and dwarven societies. 
They were driven from civilization and forced to grub for an existence amongst abandoned ruins, swamplands, and refuse piles in old cities. Dark empires and some dwarven nations enslaved them. Gully dwarves are born to survive. They avoid exposing themselves to harm and see cowardice as a virtue. Groveling is an art in their society. They average four feet in height and weigh around a hundred pounds. Kender are descended from gnomes. The earliest known Kender hero founded the land of Balafor. A second kingdom was established in northwestern Ancelon called Hilo. Kender are utterly fearless, insatiably curious, unstoppably mobile, and independent, frequently acquiring things that are not nailed down. Though strong-willed, they are not prone to consider all the possible results of their behavior. They thrive on excitement and yearn for adventure. Kender go on a wanderlust in their early 20s. They are driven to travel and experience as much as life as they can. Ironically, they are also very sensitive and can be hurt by insult or insinuation. They average 3 feet 7 inches tall and weigh around 75 pounds. They favor a weapon called a hoopack, made from a springy and resilient wood. One end is forked like a slingshot with the leather pouch for a sling. The other end is pointed and shod with metal or hardened by fire. Centaurs are not the most virtuous or intelligent, though they are a proud and noble race. They are classically hedonistic and celebrate life's pleasures through indulgence. They tend to be easygoing and practical, but can find themselves being overly vain in their appearances. They are disgusted by disfigurement and attracted to treasure. Their lower bodies are of great horses, and they have muscular human upper bodies. They tend to have long hair like a mane. They generally get along well with kender and elves, though they find dwarves and minotaurs ugly and stubborn. They are migratory in nature, and travel and live in herds. Draconians were created from stolen eggs of good dragons and corrupted by the evil magic of the Dark Queen. They served the Dark Queen and her dragon high lords in the War of the Lance, but carved out a nation for themselves in the Chaos War. Their traits are derived from the type of dragon egg they hatched from. Though most have wings, only Sivaks can fly. Baz are self-serving shock troops, Bozak are merciless magic users, Kapak have poisonous saliva and are natural bullies, Sivaks are the most powerful and often used as spies. Aurak have no wings, are the most rare, and are feared and respected appropriately. They all range in height from five and a half feet to over nine. Minotaurs are at home on both land and sea. They have an honor-based society where strength and action determines class and position. They believe they are superior to all other races and that it is their destiny to rule the world. It's their militaristic lifestyle that gives them their worldview, seeing most situations and people through a black and white lens. They stand between six and a half to seven and a half feet tall and weigh 300 to 450 pounds. Because they glory and strength, honor, and bravery, they are natural adventurers. They align themselves with whatever personal cause they find worthy, so you'll find some aligned with the Knights of Salumnia or the Dragon High Lords. And that is a brief synopsis of the races of Kryn. It is by no means absolutely comprehensive, but I felt it covered the most popular playing races in different versions of the game, and certainly the Dragonlance-specific ones. I hope you enjoyed it. Do you have a favorite race to play? How about a favorite race that's nearly impossible for you to roleplay? Leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and like this video. You can support this channel and pick up some Dragonlance gaming materials by using the affiliate link in the description below. This channel is all about celebrating the wonderful world of the Dragonlance saga, and I hope you'll join me in the celebration. Thank you for watching, this has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember... I've never heard you lie before, half-elf. I find it quite fascinating. <laughs>